Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I am super excited because I finally get to test out a Thunderbolt 5 eGPU. In fact, what I've got here is the new Razer Core V2, and on paper, definitely looks like a really nice little setup. And since this is a Thunderbolt 5 eGPU dock, I'm expecting some really good speeds out of this thing when you compare it to the older Razer Core, which was actually a Thunderbolt 3 unit but was compatible with Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4. When it comes to the V2, we do have a much larger unit. This will support much larger GPUs and a pretty beefy power supply. Taking a look at the dimensions here, it does look like we can fit up to a 362.7 millimeter GPU, so 14.27 inches long, 82 millimeters wide, and 185.1 millimeters tall. Actually, a four slot GPU will go in here, so really, when it comes down to it, even one of the biggest RTX 5090s will fit inside of this case. And to power this, you will need an ATX power supply. The Core V2 doesn't come with a power supply like the original, so you can really pick and choose what kind of wattage you want out of this thing. So if you were going to go with an RTX 5080 or 5090, you want something a bit more beefier. Plus, you need to kind of leave room because this does offer up to 140 watts out of that Thunderbolt 5 port. So if you need to charge a laptop that charges over USB Type-C, you've got plenty of wattage there. A full-size ATX power supply is going to fit right in this unit, and it also comes with a 120 millimeter fan to keep the whole case nice and chilly. I've got a couple videos that I want to make with this unit. There's a bunch of stuff that I want to test on it, and in this one, we'll get an idea of how it's going to perform. So for the power supply, I want something that's going to be able to do up to that RTX 5090. Still a bit overkill, but I'm going to go with the ROG Strix 1000 watt power supply here. Fully modular, it will be overkill even for the RTX 5090, because one thing you really got to keep in mind here is we really only need to power the 5090. We don't have a CPU attached to this, but we do need to leave room for that 140 watt PD charging. RTX 5090 can draw up to 650 watts, plus 140. We're still getting kind of close, so this is the power supply that I have on hand. This is the one I'm going to be using for this setup right now. So I've got that installed, and since it's modular, I mean, it actually looks really nice. Razer has included a nice little Velcro zip tie over on the side and plenty of room to route your cabling. There's not many people out there who are going to put together an eGPU with an RTX 5090, but I still want to test it here. And again, I've got a couple more videos coming. We're going to go with some lower end cards with different systems, but I really wanted to get a feel for how fast this thing is over Thunderbolt 5. By the way, I'm going to be using the Tough Gaming RTX 5090 here. And again, this eGPU enclosure will fit up to a four-slot GPU. Once this is all together, it actually looks really nice with that modular power supply and that RTX 5090. But I needed a unit that had Thunderbolt 5. We're going to test this over USB 4 also in this video. But what I've got here is the ROG Strix 18. I did a review on this a while ago, and I should have probably already sent it back, but I wanted to hold on to it because this does have two Thunderbolt 5 ports, and I knew I was getting a Thunderbolt 5 eGPU eventually. So after I'm done making this, I will have to ship this thing back, but I had to hold on to it because I knew I was going to need those Thunderbolt 5 ports for a video like this. And as soon as I plug the Razer Core V2 into the laptop, we get that Razer light right on the front. It's going to be using the internal and external monitor, but we really want to only swap over to the external monitor because we want to make sure we're sending all of the video out of the GPU to get the maximum performance out of this thing. Before we jump into testing, I did want to talk about Thunderbolt 5's bandwidth. It's true that yes, it's much faster than Thunderbolt 4 was. Thunderbolt 4 came in with a maximum of 40 gigabits per second. So that's pretty decent. Uh, and most of the time we wouldn't reach those speeds with an eGPU just due to, you know, bandwidth limits of the cable or the controller that we're using with Thunderbolt 4 or even USB 4. With Thunderbolt 5, we've got a maximum speed up to 120 gigabits per second, one direction. 80 gigabits per second, bi-directional bandwidth. But the biggest thing to keep in mind here with the Thunderbolt 5 eGPU is the PCIe speed limit that we're seeing right now with most of the Thunderbolt 5 eGPUs that are either on the market or have been announced. These are using PCIe 4.0 X4, which has a maximum speed up to 64 gigabits per second. So we're still going to be limited to up to 64 gigabits per second, even though we've got a much faster connection than Thunderbolt 4. But when it comes down to it, 
This is much faster than we could get out of any Thunderbolt 4 dock, even with that PCIe 4.0 X4 slot. In theory, this can come in a tad faster than Oculink, because Oculink would run it up to around 62 to 63 gigabits per second. Theoretically, we can do 64 if we can max out that PCIe 4 X4 slot. Jumping right into it here, like we saw, I'm going to be using that ROG Strix 18, and this laptop does have its own RTX 5090 laptop GPU. It's disabled for this test, but we will be comparing performance between the two. I've got the desktop 5090 connected over Thunderbolt 5 here. And uh, one way I kind of just take a look at speeds with this is an application known as CUDA-Z. So we'll go ahead and bring this up. And from our performance section, just put a heavy load on it. On the left-hand side, the Thunderbolt 5 eGPU dock with that 5090. If you take a look at the host to device and the device to host, we're anywhere from 52 up to 57 here. Way faster than Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4. In most cases, I'd say with a brand new high-end eGPU using Thunderbolt 4, around 32, 36 maximum. Older eGPUs were sitting anywhere from 26 up to around 29. And if we do some quick math here, it looks like we're getting up to 48 gigabits per second transfer speeds here with Thunderbolt 5 and that RTX 5090. Over on the right-hand side, I've got CUDA Z up and running on the laptop RTX 5090. And you can actually see that the Thunderbolt 5 connection with that RTX 50, with the desktop RTX 5090, actually has a faster connection speed than the built-in laptop unit. Now, I do want to mention again, I've got more videos coming. We're going to face this off against uh, Thunderbolt 4. So I've got a pretty good dock there. And I really wanted to see, you know, Thunderbolt 4 versus Thunderbolt 5 with the same GPU. In that video, we're not going to be using an RTX 5090. We're going to be using something a bit more reasonable. But let's go ahead and get into some testing with this setup like it is right now. So the first test I wanted to run here was Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 4K Ultra with no DLSS on both of these devices. Obviously on the left hand side, we've got the laptop RTX 5090. On the right hand side, we've got the Razer Core V2 Thunderbolt 5 eGPU with that 5090 installed. One thing you're gonna notice here is much higher draw on that desktop variant of the 5090. I mean, we're close to 500 watts here with that. And that thing does max out at 650 in a real PCIe X16 slot, but we've got this in an eGPU setup, so it's just not gonna be pushing as much as it really would. Either way, we're still seeing some pretty decent performance out of this setup with Cyberpunk 2077. And once the benchmark was finished, over on the laptop RTX 5090, we averaged 52 FPS. Over on the Thunderbolt 5 RTX 5090, we averaged 90 FPS. 4K Ultra, no DLSS. With the Cyberpunk test, the Razer Core V2 Thunderbolt 5 dock definitely came ahead, but it's a little bit of a different story when we move over to Horizon Zero Dawn. It's actually pretty crazy how much we're not coming ahead of the laptop GPU here. And the Thunderbolt 5 e GPU is definitely working harder. Uh, you can see that our TGP is way up, I mean, up above what that 5090 can pull in a laptop. But at the end of this benchmark, on the laptop 5090, we had an average of 83. On the Thunderbolt 5 5090, we had an average of 84. And one weird thing that this game kept doing to me was if you take a look down under upscaling method, it's off, but it says upscale quality was set to quality. Bit odd there, but I did run this a couple times and it seemed to come out around the same each time. And the final thing I wanted to test here on this laptop was Borderlands 4. And you can see that over on the Thunderbolt 5 eGPU, it is coming ahead just by a bit, but not as much as it really should be given the performance difference between a laptop 5090 and a desktop 5090. Now it's time to move over to something that I was really excited about, and that's handhelds. And right now, with most handhelds on the market that support either Thunderbolt or USB Type-C, we only have Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4. Still, I wanted to check out the speeds of a Thunderbolt 5 e GPU on USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4. Right now, I've got the MSI Claw A8, and this is powered by the AMD Ryzen Z2 Extreme. It's got two USB 4 ports up top, 
and you can see that I've got this set up in such a way where we're only going to be using the external monitor. This is how we're going to get the best performance out of an eGPU. All right, so now we're connected to the MSI Claw A8. We've got that AMD Ryzen Z2 Extreme, eight cores, 16 threads, and this unit has 24 gigs of RAM. Usually we've got eight dedicated to VRAM, but I've taken it down to one just so we have enough system RAM here. Instead of using that iGPU, we've got the RTX 5090 connected using this Thunderbolt 5 eGPU dock. The Claw A8 doesn't have Thunderbolt 5 and it doesn't have USB 4 V2. We've just got USB 4. And getting in here a bit closer with CUDA Z, you can see we're right there at around 36. So we're right there at the top of what USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 can do. I mean, it's getting real close to that 40 gigs, which is really awesome. And like I mentioned at the beginning, we have seen some of the newer USB 4 docks run, you know, 32 to 36. This is looking really good, but it's not quite like it was, you know, when we were connected to Thunderbolt 5 on the Strix 18. We're at ultra settings 1440p and up in the top left hand corner I've got afterburner running. You can see that our TDP at the very bottom, this is gonna be our CPU up to around 32 watts. So our CPU just isn't gonna push a game like this like uh, the CPU in that Strix 18 would. And since we're at 1440p, I mean, we're drawing anywhere from 280 up to 300 watts from the Razer 4 V2 Thunderbolt 5 e GPU with the RTX 5090 installed. Seeing over 70 FPS on average, I uh, was really hoping for a little more out of this. But there's something here that works amazingly with eGPUs. And I mean, even on a high-end GPU, we've got some DLSS brain gen that we can enable. So going from an average of around 76 FPS up to an average of around 276 FPS, it's a giant jump, but we've got a lot of fake frames going on here. Either way, I mean, it's still a pretty smooth experience, and I was just hoping for a little more out of this. It's really on par with a good Thunderbolt 4 eGPU right now, given that we're connected over USB 4 on this handheld. Again, this was just my first video with the Thunderbolt 5 eGPU using this Razer Core B2 over Thunderbolt 5 and testing with the USB 4. At the time I'm making this video, yeah, Thunderbolt 5, much faster than an older Thunderbolt 4 connection, and it's definitely getting on up there with something like Oculink. That's going to be my next video. I'd like to kind of put those two against each other, and I will be using a lower-end GPU. So if there's a specific GPU you want me to use in that setup, let me know in the comments below. We'll be putting Thunderbolt 5 up against Oculink and even a USB 4 dock, well, a newer good USB 4 dock, just to see the difference between the three. But when it comes to the overall dock, but when it comes to the overall Razer Core B2 itself as a Thunderbolt 5 dock, I mean, this thing is pretty awesome. Love the fact that we can basically fit any GPU in here right now that's on the market and any ATX power supply. So the possibilities are kind of limitless here. You can go with the lower end setup. You can go with the higher end setup. It's really up to you. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning a little more about the Razer Core V2, I'll leave some links in the description. And definitely keep an eye out on the channel because I've got more videos on the way. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.